What I'd like to do in this video is to find out as much information about the motion of this object, the motion that's represented by this velocity versus time graph. Now to do that, I need to know a few bits of information. I need to know information about the velocity, and I need to know information about the acceleration of this object. So to find out some more information about the acceleration of this object, I'm going to pick a few points. So I'm going to pick this first point, where time is initially equal to zero seconds, and the initial velocity is going to be five meters per second. And then I can pick this point here, which is an interesting point, and I'll come back to. This point right here occurs at the point t equals five seconds, and the velocity at this point, what you should see is that it's slowing down to zero meters per second. So that's the second point. Another point of interest is this point right here, which I could call the final velocity, which occurs at the time t equals 10 seconds. And the velocity, if you look over to the velocity axis, the velocity is negative five meters per second. So let's talk about what's happening over this interval of time. Now, we've picked out some information. We've picked out the initial velocity at this point here, and the final velocity over this interval, which occurs right here, is zero meters per second. So intuitively, what you should say is that the velocity of this object's decreasing, or it's slowing down. And then what you should see is that over this interval from five seconds to 10 seconds, the velocity goes from zero meters per second to negative five meters per second, the velocity of the object's actually increasing. So the object's speeding up. So that's one of the first things that you should do when you're given a complicated graph like this, just to make some intuitive sense of what's actually happening. Now we can actually calculate how fast the velocity is changing, that is the acceleration. And we can pick any of the points. We can pick this point and this point, or this point and this point. It doesn't matter because the slope of the line is going to be the same. So what I'm going to do to calculate the acceleration of the object, I'm going to use this point here, and I'm going to use this point right here to calculate the acceleration of the object. Note that the acceleration is going to be constant. So in this case, I'm going to use my relationship that says acceleration is the change in the velocity divided by the change in time. Another way to think about this is that the acceleration is how fast the velocity changes over this interval of time. Now, this also equals the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by, again, the time it takes to change this velocity to go from this velocity to this velocity. Now using the points that I was given, my final velocity over the first five seconds is going to be zero meters per second. And then I'm going to subtract off whatever the initial velocity, which in this case was a positive five meters per second. And then I'm going to divide it out by the time it takes to change that velocity, which I said was five seconds. We're looking at the first five seconds of motion. Now this works out to be zero minus five, which is minus five meters per second divided by five seconds. And then this works out to be negative five divided by five is negative one meter per second per one second. Now you don't usually see the units of acceleration written like this. You don't see it written as negative one meter per second per one second. You're more familiar with seeing the acceleration expressed as negative one meter per second squared or change in velocity of one meter per second every single second. Now we can use this information right here, this acceleration, to go back up to our graph and say that the acceleration of this object, or the slope of this object, equals negative one meter per second squared. It's a negative acceleration. Now a few of the rules that you've learned so far is that first, this is called positive velocity. Anytime the velocity is above the time axis, it's going to be positive velocity. Below the time axis, it's going to be negative velocity. Now, one of the other rules that you've probably seen before is that when you have positive velocity and negative acceleration, the object is going to be slowing down. Now, in this case, what you should see is that the object goes from five meters per second, and in one second, the object goes to four meters per second which is confirmed in our calculation that we said that the acceleration is negative one meter per second per second. So we go from five to four meters per second in one second. In one more second, we're going to go from four meters per second, which is right here, to three meters per second. And if we keep going, we go from three to two meters per second, two meters per second to one, and then to zero. So what's actually happening over this first five second interval of time is that the object's slowing down to a stop. Then what happens is the object actually turns around at this point and it changes the direction of its velocity. So if you recall another rule from physics that when the sign of the velocity and acceleration are the same, okay, we have negative velocity and negative acceleration, the object's gonna be speeding up. So if you notice, the velocity goes from zero to negative one meters per second in one second. And then the velocity continues to increase, not in the positive direction, but in the negative direction.